Good afternoon. Now, if anyone, the meal wasn't that awesome? Like being home in Texas. <laughs> Chili and. So, if anyone starts nodding off next to you, just reach over, lean over to their ear and go, Fire! <laughs> Wake them up good. But that's my job, right? To keep you awake. So, uh, thank you, ladies, for such a, such a lunch. You stick by the stuff and your reward will be greater than us preachers, I'm sure, in the glory. And you know, it's true what we just sang. Our song through endless ages will be, Jesus led me all the way. But you know, that just didn't start at our salvation. From He decreed you to be conceived the moment you were conceived. He carefully, tenderly, intimately knew your, your, all your parts as they developed. And you came into this earth the moment you were supposed to be born. And no matter what has happened to you, the grief, the horror, the abuse, the shame, the guilt, the, the hidden things, Acts 17 says that God puts you where you are, where you are to live, so that you would seek the Lord and find Him. I would have loved to have been born in the British Isles. I've loved Britain since I became a Christian in 1973. But, I, you know, I wouldn't sound good would I, with an English accent. Maybe. But God put me where I grew up and I'm there now. So, all of our ways and all of our days are planned by Him for His glory and our good. You know, there's an old... I think it's, I think it's Augustus Top Lady... And he wrote this, A sovereign protector I have. Unseen, yet forever at hand. Unchangeably faithful to save. Almighty to rule and command. I want to speak to you today from Psalm 124 on God as our preserver. Now, Another title could be The Kind and Gracious Perfect Providence of God in Your Life to Keep You Till This Moment. That's a longer title, so we'll go with God Our Preserver. Psalm 124. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, how would you answer that? You know, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I would have died six months ago. Right? If it had not been for the Lord, I wouldn't have made it to this conference. My work, my problems, my health. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say, we could say it in unison, but I won't force you to. Now may Israel say, that's you. If it had not been the Lord, who was on our side. When men rose up against us, <clears throat> then they would have swallowed us up quickly when their wrath was kindled against us. Then the waters would have overwhelmed us. The stream would have gone over our soul. Then the proud waters, the swelling waters, the floods would have gone over our soul. But God, Amen. blessed be the Lord who has not given us as a prey to their teeth. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowler. The snare is broken and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. The Lord our preserver or the tapestry of His kind providence toward us. Psalm 124 wants us to be able in our journey to look back. Wow. Look what God did for me there. 
Man, I remember what He did for me here. Remember. Remember how God has kept us. We recognize. My father died when I was eight years old. And he was a prisoner of war in World War II in, in Germany. He was wounded in action. Uh, brought to Germany to a concentration camp. And... Uh, the direction of that bullet determines if I'm here today or not. He was only wounded. And if he had died, he would have never come home and met my mother. There would not be me. There would not be me and my wife, Linda. There would not be our six children. There would not be our ten grandchildren. There would not be our one great-grandchild. If God had not directed that bullet in World War II, to only let my father be wounded. You think about the providence of God. Everything He controls, everything He controls for His glory and for His church in the earth. Wars. The United Nations. Everything God controls for His glory and and for the good of His people and, and their preservation. Now this came home very real to Lynn and I in July. Um, we, in July we usually go to the beach and we'll take sometimes our six children and our ten grandchildren and it's an absolute chaos circus. But Linda feeds on it and I kind of pull my hair out. See, I used to have a full head. <laughs> But in July, we took three grandsons. We drove from near Dallas to the Atlantic coast. 19 hours it took us. Yeah, we, we stopped a few times, but we got there a week at the beach. And so, one day, we'd always go in the morning and then it gets too hot, we'll come in. And so, one day, at high tide in the afternoon, our 13-year-old grandson, Cole, he and I stay back. And Linda takes two grandsons, eight years old, Weston and Riley, back to the beach. And the tide's high and the, and the waves are strong. And so Linda's there and she looks up and they're caught between two massive waves and they can't get in. Eight-year-old boys. So she runs. She's knocked down by a wave. She can't get to them. And she has this, this decision to make. Do I, keep, do I go get help? She runs on the beach. She only sees two ladies there. And she's looking around. And then she sees two men. And she runs and calls out to them, Come, my grandsons, please come! And Two 40-year-old strong men, one was a state police officer. They rush, they go out in the water, they finally get to them and they rescue them. If two strong men had not been there and had not come running, we would have had two dead eight-year-old grandson's bodies out to sea. And for 24 hours, we could hardly stand the thought of what happened. If God had not, what then? That's what this psalm is about in your life, in my life, in every Christian's life. If God had not in your life, then what would have happened? You don't know. But you know somewhat. Psalm 124 is about God as our preserver. What does it mean to preserve something, first of all? Well, by definition, to preserve something is it's an action taken to save and protect something from damage or decay or destruction. And it's an action taken to preserve something or someone from destruction to keep something long term to save it and preserve it long term. David here is recognizing and remembering and calling to mind and he's thinking about with wonder and with 
reflection, almost with the feeling that Linda and I had that day. What if? What if? If God had not... David has this wonder. He has this amazement in his heart. He has this glory. He's like he's saying to Israel, look and see, understand. Do you want to understand this? The realization that over all your life, God alone has preserved you. He has had your back 24-7, even when you didn't know Him. Prevenient grace to keep you from killing yourself, to keep you from being so stupid, you would die prematurely. Every moment of every day, all your days until you close your eyes in death, God is and will be your preserver. Now this is stabilizing truth because your life's not in your hands. It doesn't negate responsibility, does it? It doesn't negate diligence. It doesn't negate us doing all we're to do. But under the, all of it is under the umbrella and the sovereign unseen control of God governing and planning and keeping and guiding and nourishing and ordering your steps when you don't know He's ordering your steps to protect you from something that could come. David is looking back to see that God has preserved Israel. If it had not been the Lord, if the Lord had not. And David is saying, every believer should stop and think and ask that question. When have you done that lately? The last time you read Psalm 124, did you pause and apply? Lord, if you had not, then this would have... Thank you. If you had not, then this would have happened. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. What would have happened? He says, then they would have swallowed. Now you get into verse 3 and 4. The two problems that Israel had in, in particular context at times. First was men, the problem of men. Do, do people give us trouble? Do people give us grief? Do people irritate us? You know, we'd all be perfect if it weren't for people being down here. First, he says, if God had not been on our side when men rose up against us, there will always be men who rise up against the church. The church of Jesus Christ would have become extinct probably after 200 years, I don't know the numbers, if God hadn't preserved her. The gospel would have been extinguished. But I tell you what, when Romanism was birthed in the 4th century, they called the 4th century to the 14, who knows what they call it? The Dark Ages? Guess what? It wasn't dark. The gospel was advancing among remnant of believers widely. It was advancing. They were there. Read the torch of the testimony by John Kennedy. The church never died out. The gospel never died out because God preserved His church and His people and He always will. Do you fear the future? This is a psalm for you. You're going to make it, brother. You're going to make it, sister, all the way. All the way. Men in this evil world will always be a problem. They always have been. Since the garden, Adam our father believed a lie and the world fell. The tragedy in Eden, as one of my friends titled one of his books, The Tragedy in Eden. Men are fallen. And the church has always had the opposition of men who rise up against the people of God and are determined. Psalm 2, the kings of the earth take counsel together against the Lord and His anointing. Say, let us break their bands asunder. Let us rip away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall what? 
laugh. It's a holy snicker that these little pot shirts down here who think they're something, think they're going to dethrone my son. I've set my king in Zion. Men rose up against us. And they would have overthrown the church. And they would overthrow... It says they would have swallowed. They would have done it had not the Lord been on our side. And then it says floods, the waters, verses 4 and 5, look at that. Then the waters would have overwhelmed us. The stream had gone over our soul. You know, the floods are a picture of judgment, right? And other times the floods are a picture of great trials, swelling trials that, that you feel like you're up to here and you can't, you can't get any more air and the, the water's right here and it's, you're overwhelmed by the problems of life. You're overwhelmed by the, the pressures and, and the stresses and the problems that keep coming. The waters are come up to here and you think you're going to drown. When I was about 10 years old, I didn't know how to swim when I was 10. And I was out at the, the, uh, the pool, the swing pool in town. And uh, I was standing too close to the pool. And a friend came along lovingly and pushed me in the deep end. Whoop. I was scared. But the greater embarrassment was that it was a girl that rescued me. <laughs> Look at him. My friends. The waters can be scary, can't they? The waters that, that flood in, striving within, fears within, strivings without, problems on every hand. The waters want to overflood us, overwhelm us. And they would. They would absolutely eat you up and spit you out and leave you in the dust had not God been on your side. If you and I could look back with 2020 spiritual vision and could see every time God preserved us, we would be astounded. We would melt in tears. Blessed are the eyes that see that. Psalm 124 gives us a clear picture of it. What would have happened? Well, if God had not been on your side, what would have happened? Some of you wouldn't be here today. Some of you would be in a very bad way today. Some of you would not be alive today had not God been on your side. Brethren, do we see this? Do we meditate in it? Do we marinate in it? Do we let it every day? Do we live in light of eternity? Do we live with the reality God alone has been my keeper or I would not have been kept? About 1985, every event He controls. About 1985, I was driving out of our town, Denton, Texas, driving south. It was a beautiful morning, two-lane road. And outside of Denton, there are these horse ranches, beautiful horses. And, and so I was driving. There was a truck in front of me. There were some workers in the back of the pickup truck. And nothing unusual about that. But I'm driving along, and I glance over. Beautiful horses right there. I grew up in West Texas, a lot of horses out there. And I glanced over and saw these beautiful horses. I turned back right then, and this man is tumbling, going 70 miles an hour, tumbling out of the back of that truck. He falls out in the road in front of me. And if I had been looking two more seconds, I would have run right over him. I see him. I steer over. I stop. Right behind me, there's a nurse. She stops and she comes to his aid. I don't know if he died or lived, but I know this. If God had not brought my attention back to the road in that split second, he would have been dead. Is not God reigning over the affairs of men, over the affairs of our lives, the details of our lives? Yes, if God had not. Without God preserving you, where would you be today? 
It's a question David wants you to answer and think about. He uses this word, then, three times in verses 3, 4, and 5. And he wants us to think and realize what could have been if he had not. What would have happened if he had not been in the moment with us every second? I mean, one angel pokes another one and says, you know, he's going to drive too fast today, and so one of us needs to go and slow that other car down and detour him so they go and you live. You didn't know what happened. The angelic creatures are our servants to minister to those who are the heirs of salvation. We, we don't know how many times angels have come and done things for us because of redemption. And if you saw them, you'd be scared to death. You don't see them, but they're always ministering to the saints of God to keep this from happening, to cause this to happen. Evil men would have wiped us out. Life's floods of problems would have happened. And listen, you never once delivered yourself. God did it, so be glad about it. Psalm 41.2 says, The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive, and he shall be blessed in the earth. That's true of you so far. And look, you can't die till God's finished with you. I forget who said it, but it's true. We're all, was it Wesley? We're all immortal till our work's done. Psalm, I want you to look at Psalm 66. Look at it with me because this is so awesome. I'll read it. You, you, you follow and you let it sink in. Psalm 66, 5 through 9. Here's an invitation from the Lord to come and see His works. Psalm 66, 5. Come, see the works of God. He is awesome in His doing toward the sons of men, the children of men. He turned the sea into dry land. They went through on the flood on foot. There did we rejoice in Him. He rules by His power forever. His eyes behold the nations. Let not the rebellious exalt themselves. Selah. Just think of that. Oh, bless our God, ye people, and make the voice of His praise to be heard. And then He moves from the, the greatness of the crossing of the Red Sea and His ruling by His power forever to verse 9. The intimate. From the transcendent to the intimate and personal. He holds our soul in life. And He will not allow our feet to be moved. You talk about sovereign control. A sovereign protector I have, unseen yet forever at hand, unchangeably faithful to save, almighty to rule and command. That's your God. And He is your Creator. He's, he's your Redeemer. He's your Sovereign Lord. He's your Father. He's your Savior. He's your great high priest. He's your good shepherd. And He is your intimate preserver every day. Walk with Him. He's your bodyguard. I, I met a preacher one time, and I won't tell the story, but he, he needed these guys, I think. He had two bodyguards with him. There were so many threats on his life. And so, we have an unseen protector, a bodyguard that is greater than all the sons of men. Our Savior, our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. And He is our preserver. And the psalmist says here, He has not given us His prey to their teeth. He could have. We would have deserved it. Do you think, do you think that you deserve something more than hell. He could have given us His prey to their teeth, but we escaped, David says. We have escaped from the snare of the fowler. The snare is broken. 
and we're escaped. That snare was the snare of the devil and sin and death and bondage and guilt and culmination. And the Lord Jesus Christ came and He broke the snare on the cross and it was broken and finished. And we were set free by that one work at Calvary. The snare is broken and we are escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Brethren, this afternoon, open your eyes afresh and see Him as your preserver. He has kept you. He's protected you. The tapestry of God's life. You know, a, a knitting or a crochet piece, it's so beautiful. You've heard the analogy, but it's true. You, you look on the back side of it, it makes no sense. It's just, it's just string or it's just whatever. It makes no sense. But you turn it over. Wow. Look at this handiwork. Look how beautiful, look how perfect it is. Brethren, your life and the providences, you're seeing the back side of things. We see through a glass darkly. You're seeing the back side of the tapestry and the, the crochet picture. Only when you get to glory and you're there will you see the front. And you'll, you'll see and you'll sing, all the way, all the way, my Savior led me. Oh, the fullness of His love. All the way, He led me through the trials and tribulations and heartaches. I, I was only more than a conqueror. Everything you go through, you'll be made more than a conqueror because He is your preserver. The Bible says this, we are kept by the power of God. Now think about that. The very power that created the universe that created and named all the stars. How many stars are there, Tim? You know, you know, just like that. How many stars are there? Well, now they're finding that there are billions of galaxies, right? I'm not an astronomer nor a son of an astronomer, but they're, they're seeing more, right? God named them all. He who named all the stars keeps you by His by the same power. And you're more important than the stars. No matter what you're going through, no matter what the heartache is, no matter how discouraging you are, you have a sovereign protector who's keeping you all the way. And He's working all things to good for your, His glory and for your good in your life. That doesn't happen for the, believer, the unbeliever. Uh, not everything is good in the life of an unbeliever. But in the life of a child of God, the one who has this sovereign protector as his father and his keeper, God causes all things to work for the good in the lives of those who are called according to his purpose. He will hold me fast. He will hold me fast. For my Savior loves me so, he will hold me fast. Now, every time you sing that in the future, I want you to think about Psalm 124. That's what we're talking about. You can take it to the bank. You have a sovereign protector. And you are in His hands. Beloved, rejoice in it. Believe it. And walk in the confidence and assurance of that. Because... God shows you to do something out of Tim Conway's message or Jeremy's message and you have fears and struggles, uh, you have a sovereign preserver who's taking you every step where you're going. Nothing can happen to you except it's, your, it's in your Father's good purpose for you, for your good and for His glory. So be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. He's with you as your preserver. Amen. Father, thank You for this psalm. What a glorious thing it is. And what it says so much, Lord, in such few words. We thank You. And we rejoice today and we confess, Lord, if it had not been You who was on our side, men would have swallowed us up. The waters would have overwhelmed us. But blessed be God, You've not given us as a prey to their teeth. Lord, our soul has escaped. 
out of the snare of the fowler. The snare is broken. And we just confess today and rejoice in the fact that our help is in the name of the Lord. Blessed be Your name, O Lord our God. Through Jesus Christ we rejoice. Amen.